What's going on guys? This is Mia Sin and welcome to OCG Metagame Breakdown number 9. I'm a little late, obviously, because this was uh, posted on March 10th and we're March 15th at the moment. So uh, yeah, uh, it would have been nice if I uh, did that uh, when I could back in Australia, but obviously I was a little too busy. Anyways, this one's pretty big as well. 152 top performing decks from 20 tournaments, but only covering like three days. So it's not that much, uh, but it's, it's, still, um, it's still somewhat interesting. And there's a lot of things that are going to be relevant for the TCG as well. So obviously studying all these OCG metagame breakdowns is always important, even for us. Even if they have max C, it doesn't change that much, like, apart from that. But yeah, anyways, before we move any further, I would really appreciate if you could smash the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much, you are the best. And also check out my sponsors, Inspire TCG, as well as Dueling Guard. And I also offer coaching now in Learn TCG. Link will be in the description box below. And with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so the number one best deck is uh, back to being Fire King again. Actually, it's always been Fire King, but not by a super long shot. I mean, uh, in the breakdown number eight, Fire King and Tenpai Dragon were almost the same. So it's kind of crazy when Tenpai Dragon is a going second OTK, uh, OT OTK deck, and it's almost just as good as the best deck. But now the gap is kind of getting bigger and bigger because now pure Snake Eyes people are understanding that it's just really good, right? You can play more non-engine than Fire King. And the deck also got more support in Legacy of Destruction with Snake Eye Diabell Star. And the deck is a little better at making rank 1 monsters, which is important if you're trying to make the Lirilusk, I believe, assemble Nightingale or Kikinagashi Fucho, which is the bird that is unaffected by card effects, and then you can detach two materials and make it undestructible by battle. So <laughs> it's basically impossible to out if you don't have Santa Claus, Kaijus, or um, Underworld Goddess, but Underworld Goddess is irrelevant in by Dragon, you can't make it. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. Anyways, Fire King, still best deck, Snake Eye, second best deck. Uh, one Horus Snake Eye, that's very interesting. And then we got Tenpai Dragon tied with Voiceless Voice. Uh, so Voiceless Voice also got better with the uh, Blessing, the Continuous Spell. You can place it on your opponent's uh, uh, turn as well. And it adds one extra interruption to uh, your, I mean, array of interruptions because you're going to be able to Ritual Summon like a Soravis on the opponent's turn after being able to bounce it back. So you can negate an opponent's uh, summon again. It doesn't really fix the issues of the deck. The deck is still somewhat... Actually, if anything, the deck becomes more inconsistent with this card because it's not a starter. It's just a card that in improves your grind game, but it's it's never been important because the deck already has somewhat of a good grind game. The issue is getting started in a crazy format with so many ridiculous decks. So yeah, Voices Voice is not in the best position right now, but it's also not in the worst position. If the far decks get hit, Voices Voice is probably the best deck to play. But then there are a lot of decks that just counter Voices Voice like ridiculously well. Ubel is a great example, and there are some other decks that have a very good Voices Voice matchup. I would keep an eye out on uh, this deck in, uh, in in both ways, actually. Uh, Branded is next up. Okay, yeah, I mean, that, that's always a good deck, especially in the OCG, but in the TCG as well, you just have to be, like, really good and understand how to play this deck correctly. Uh, Chimera, uh, I actually don't believe in this deck. It, it just loses to one hand shop, and a lot of people are playing upwards of, like, 12, 15 hand shops. Not a really big fan whatsoever. Mathmech Co-Talker, okay, yeah, they still have Circular, I believe. Centurion, uh, King Calamity is banned, and Centurion is still doing well. See, that's, that's the crazy part, right? It's... Without their best boss monster, the deck is still somewhat decent because the new support is really just that insane. It really is. It's kind of scary. Anyways, the Runic, pure Runic stun, and then Sky Striker. New support really didn't change too much. It's just that people like the deck, that's it. But I actually think it's really underwhelming. The new Link monsters, especially, you look at them and you're like, what the hell? It's crazy how it started with Kigari, and the best Link monster to this day is still Kigari. It, it never really changed. Anyways, Flunderies, okay, yeah, Ritual Beast, Style of Mangrade. Actually, this is a huge fall from Grace for, for, for Ritual Beast. The deck was doing much better before. So now seeing Ritual Beast do even less good than Math Mech is a little concerning. Salamangrate also a little weak, weird. It just, it makes no sense because it is a good deck. And they do have Code of Soul. They do have a lot of um, just things that make the deck pretty nice. So I'm, I'm disappointed in that, honestly. Uh, Supreme King uh, Melodious. Why is the pure Melodious deck not doing that great? And what is Supreme King really doing in Melodious? I, this is a genuine question. I honestly don't know. Uh, if you know the answer, uh, please let me know in the comment section. <laughs> I'm really going to need your help there. Uh, Unchained, okay. Chaos Thunder Dragon, Dinosaur, Drytron. Raidraptor again, not doing that good. Uh, Snake Eye Infernoid, uh, very disappointing. Should be doing way better. It's actually really sad to see that none of the Terminal World decks are doing good in the, TC uh, in the OCG. Because I generally believe in the, in the TCG, they're going to be nuts. Maybe it's just because the OCG still hasn't had any ban lists, but 
We know for a fact that they will have a ban list in uh, April 1st because unlike the TCG, they have set uh, release ban list dates. So you guys also let me know if you prefer a sporadic ban list that are just like RNG, it's just a surprise, comes out of nowhere. Or if you want like like set ban list every single like four months or something so you know when to plan ahead and stuff. Anyways, uh, Adventure, Synchron, Horus, Horus, Orcus, Labyrinth, Melodious, Mathematic, Rescue Ace, Tri Brigade, Draco Slayer, Zephyra, Dragoon, T Trap Tricks. Nobody cares about those decks. Alrighty, so Fire King. Okay, what's up with them? Well, basically, a lot of hand traps are being played, right? So people are preparing for that by playing the maximum amount of copies that can, uh, um, amount of cards that can somewhat punish hand traps. So uh, two Call by the Grave as well as one Cross Out. You can't do any more. Uh, in the TCG, though, you can do three Cross Out, one Call by the Grave. So, there's technically one more card that can negate hand traps, but cross out, maybe in this format, might be a little better because people are playing Nibiru and Imperm, so that these two hand traps are not negatable by Call by the Grave. Call by the Grave can only stop Ash Valor and then Drool and Mourner, but Drool is so incredibly weak that you don't even want to Call by the Grave it anyways. Unless your play is Bonfire Search Snake Eye Ash, then yes, you want to Call by the Grave the Drool, but. The card is just so incredibly weak, I'm just not a fan at all. Uh, and then, yeah, Triple Tactic Talents is just a really good one. It's a classic. It's really safe as well. But in the side deck, we can start doing things like Triple Tactic Thrust, and then we can get Floodgates that just insta-win against Standby Dragon, because they're playing a lot of hand traps, and you can hard punish them for that. So you can get d Bear calling Synchro, or the Black Old Laughs. That's also a turn-skipping card, I want to say, against them. And even against Voices Voice, this card is remarkable. But either way, if you if you get your D bearer, you can call a ritual, and that's also really good. So you can argue maybe you don't need the black gold laughs, but against the link based strategies or the decks that don't really need to, you know, special summon too much from the extra deck, this card can be better than D bearer. A really good example would be against Rescue Ace, who just called the Triple Lance, and unless they're trying to summon it back from the graveyard, then they can't summon it back at, at all. But it is relatively hard to get Triple Lance in the graveyard if you're not summoning it in the first place. You would have to go Emergency, summon something, and then destroy the Triple Lance and the Handwall Tribute, and then go Princess Revive back. But then you're going into so many uh, steps and loops in order to summon back one monster, you're most likely going to be getting stopped by something else. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of this card overall. I think it's a really good staple, and a really good Thrust target as well, and also a good discard fodder, because if you draw this with Diabell Star, you know, you don't really have to neg by discarding like a hand shop, right? So you, you never feel bad for discarding this card, and that's something that I really appreciate a lot about it. But yeah, anyways, for the rest of the main deck, nothing really too special, 12 hand shops, as well as five other non-engine cards that I can see. Uh, the Skyburn, as well as the third Kirin, this is something that you're never going to be, be, be seeing in the TCG. Uh, well, I mean, we could see it at the very beginning of the format, but now we're getting to the point where everybody's playing two Kirin, and people are even siding out one going second. So, Farking Engine is getting super, super minimalistic to the point where a lot of people just don't really like these Farking cards, and they're switching to pure Snake Eyes, not because the deck is more powerful, not at all. And it's barely more consistent, really not, but it's only because you can play more hand shops instead of those Farking cards, and the end board is still good. It's not as good, but it's still good enough. And that's when I say it's just. It's it's just safer to go into Snake Eye if there are a lot of like dangerous decks running around. And uh, you can play a lot of like anti hand trap cards as well in Snake Eye if you already are maxing out on the good hand traps. We had 12 hand traps in the main deck and we're siding even more. This is ridiculous. Double Nibiru, double Bistol, triple Ogre, and then double Delta Gamma. That's uh, 10 hand traps in the side with 12 in the main. That is ridiculous. This is what Yu-Gi-Oh! is turning into. I swear to God. It's actually crazy out there. But yeah, you Ogre the uh, field spell of uh, Tenpai Dragon. They kind of lose because it's not like Union Hangar. It doesn't search on activation. It's more like a Draconic Diagram. You activate the card, and then after that, after it resolves, you go Effect to search, and then discard one, and then you can just Ogre that. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a good card against them, and they, they don't really... I mean, they don't really have much to stop it. It's not like Cosmic Cyclone, MST, and Typhoon would be better because if you have to set them, then they can Duster, Lightning Storm, or Heavy Storm you. Especially in the OCG because they have all those cards. In the TCG, we only have two Lightning Storm, one Duster, so it's a little less realistic if you have multiple back row. Uh, but still, they can still rely on Cosmic Cyclone. Not evenly because evenly matched is a card that, that will never see play in Tenpai Dragon. Obviously, again, they need their battle phase in order to generate resources. They need to battle... So yeah, another thing to keep into consideration, and the Bistules will always be there for pure Snake Eye, and uh, collateral damage in general, like Voiceless Voice, even though I don't even think it's that good against Voiceless Voice, really easy for them to play around that, so it's just I think a lot of people are overestimating the impact of these cards against them. 
And he's moving on into pure Snake Eye. So one really interesting thing uh, in order to, again, mitigate the impact of hand traps, if you're playing Snake Eye Ash, well, obviously, obviously you're playing Snake Eye Ash and pure Snake, obviously. But let's just say you go normal summon effect and then you get stopped. Uh, what do you have in order to keep pushing? Well, obviously you have the Kirin and you're, if you're playing Fire King. But if you're not and you're playing a deck like pure Snake Eyes and you don't have Cross Out or Call by the Grave or you don't even have the Abelstar to keep pushing, you can go into a Link Rebo or, um, Relinqu well, not Relinquished Anima, Link Rebo. And then you can go Parallelic Seed and then Special Summon it alongside another Parallelic Seed. And then you can go into Infernal Flame Banshee, which searches the Populace. And then you can Special Summon that, get your search for Divine Temple or the original. And then you can go into an SP Little Knight in order to banish the Infernal Flame Banshee in the Graveyard. It's a rank 4. And then the Banshee has an effect to summon itself back when it's banished. So you are actually extending really nice and then you can make an Appaloosa and then you play from there. So that's a really nice play that we even saw uh, being used by Shunping in the UDS. And the OCG players decided to recycle it and they're doing pretty much the same thing. So as you can see in this pure Snake Eye decklist, we are seeing three Paralytic Seed. I don't know if this is going to be uh, really popular in the uh, TCG as well, but it is definitely a really interesting tech. Yeah, a lot of hand traps as well. Huh? One Nibiru, uh, three Ash, three Maxi, double Veiler, three Imperm, so that's what, one, four, seven, nine, twelve, and then again, the five uh, non-engine cards to be the hand traps, the Forbidden Droplet, uh, but that's 42 cards, so to be fair, and I mean, I, I don't know. Again, I really am not sure if this is much better than Fire King. I think Fire King just has a lot more inherent gas, but uh, you can also argue that Snake Eye Diabelster is just a card that adds a lot. And it's a card that prevents you, uh, that, that allows you to only play one Flambridge in the main deck as well, because you can always get it back from the graveyard with the effect of Snake Eye Diabelster, in case you didn't know. Uh, the effect in the Spell and Trap Zone is pretty uh, important because you can use it to special summon it from the Spell and Trap Zone, so it makes Divine Temple an instant. Uh, uh, extender, which is really nice, instead of a card that just does nothing. And then you're also placing back a card from your graveyard, well, a fire from the graveyard in the Spell and Chap Zone. And then when it battles, you can make both monsters go in the Spell and Chap Zone. But to be fair, that's not super relevant. Uh, it could be relevant against some decks, but meh, for the most part, it shouldn't matter too much. Uh, but yeah, uh, nothing too spicy in the main deck. And in the, <coughs> sorry, in the side deck, I was gonna die. Uh, another Nibiru, double bell, double drum. So five more hand shops, and then double cosmic duster, another forbidden droplet, and then one thrust. Freaking OCG players, and then two D barrier, two anti spell. Nobody's on summon limit. That is interesting. Okay, and then the um, Lewis Lusk assembled Nightingale against same principle as Kiki Nagashi Fucho. You use it to survive against Tenpai Dragon. They can't OTK, and then next turn you just make a uh, comeback. So if you get shifted, if you get stopped by too many hand shops, you know what to do. And here we are, uh, we are, we have been made aware of the fact that the Ted by Dragon um, uh, players, they all ended up losing to Pure Snake Eyes in their tournament. Uh, that, is, that is, again, because of the fact that they're well prepared, they know how to be Ten by Dragon. Now, it's not like back before where Ten by Dragon was doing so good because nobody really knew how to beat the deck. As you can see, this Furking deck is not really playing too many ways of beating the deck. And then Ten by Dragon obviously just has so many hand shops. That's 22 hand traps right there, I believe, and then two Forbidden Droplet, and then 16 engine cards. Yeah, and then again, uh, this is the one deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! that can play Prosperity and still OTK you. One card is like 37,000 damage. It is absolute insanity. Uh, but again, though, this pure Snake Eye decklist from last breakdown was not playing any rank 1 Xyz monsters. Quite shocking, I'm not gonna lie. But again, things have changed, people have evolved. And they are way, way better against the deck, so the deck is doing a little less good. And also, you are, you have a lot of ways to just outplay them, right? Because post game one, you choose if if you lost game one, you choose who goes first. Uh, so you can mind game them. You can go like, okay, well sometimes you go first, sometimes I go first. Because if they think they're going first, they are going to be siding in the heat wave, which is a very good card going first, but obviously unplayable going second. It's gonna lock you because it's at the start of the main phase one. It's kind of like extravagance. You can't full combo and then use heat wave. Uh, so if they draw it going second, it's one less card in their hand. But if they draw it going first, then you have to skip your turn. And then next turn, they just kill you. So that's really scary. Uh, so that's the reason why a lot of uh, non Tenpai Dragon decks, like the, the Snake Eye decks, they're choosing willingly to go first. And then they have the Rust with D-Barrier in order to just make them skip their turn because they're extra deck, realistically. They're only summoning Link Monsters. Maybe they're going to Hieratic Seal, but that's it, that's all, honestly. I mean, yeah, they, they, honestly, they will go into Hieratic Seal, 
But are you scared of one monster with zero attack? Maybe not, huh? Maybe not. <laughs> and they're bar breakers. If all they do is super poly you and then attack you and then pass turn, you also couldn't really care less about that, right? But yeah, the deck, uh, how did it really evolve? I mean, it's still playing a lot of hand shops. So one Nibiru double shifter, triple Ash, triple Max C. So that's six, eight, nine, and then three Imperium, 12 hand shops, and a lot of board breakers, which is something I usually disagree with. But I guess in this deck, it might make sense. So double Santa Claus, Merry Christmas. And then we also have double Joblet, double Super Bali, no, sorry, double Regeki. For some reason, this card is a two in the OCG. Makes no sense. This card sucks. And then double Lightning Storm. Okay, so exact same as in the TCG. And then one Duster. I, I don't understand. You might as well main deck Heavy Storm at this point, no? Okay, yeah. And then Prosperity, Terraforming, and then Talent and Thrust, which I also don't really understand. I wouldn't really play these cards in this deck because the ceiling level is very low. Like, your your engine, it, it just, like, it does one thing and it has to resolve. It's not a deck that is inherently resilient. So I'd play maybe, like, Call by the Grave, maybe Cross Out, but not these cards. Not a fan. And, yeah, the side deck, even more hand shops because obviously that's just never enough, right? Uh, some Cosmics. Necro Valley. Uh, this is a combo that you can search uh, with Ancient Fairy Dragon because you can Synchro Summon it. Even going first, uh, there are some nice plays. I will try to make a combo video and deck profile on this deck very soon. So stay tuned and make sure you smash the like and subscribe button because otherwise it's not going to happen. And then Rivalry for dragons, obviously. Every monster that you summon is a dragon. Makes sense, but it will block your super poly, not that it really matters. Now we've got Voices Voice. Uh, in here, uh, Kira kind of mentions briefly about a player that did something a little illegal. Like uh, going quick effect and then trigger effect. That is not how Yu-Gi-Oh works. You got to go trigger effects first and then quick effects, but... The quick effect of the Seravis main deck monster, and now the ritual one, is a quick effect that can only be used in response to the opponent's uh, activated effect. Uh, so in other words, you have to chain directly to it, just like uh, Thunder Dragon Titan chains directly to the activation of your Thunder Dragon effect monster. So in other words, there is absolutely no shot. You can go Blessing, Chainlink 3, and Seravis, Chainlink 2. Uh, that just doesn't work. So yeah, illegal move. Uh, keep an eye out on this play when it will be a thing next format, when the continuous spell will get released. In case you didn't know what it is, just, just look at Blessing the Voice's voice. It's not even that relevant, honestly. And I say that, I understand the deck really well. It doesn't change that much. It's just a one of the ritual monster, the new one, the new Saphira is absolute trash. It's really, really bad. You don't want to touch it at all. So this deck list looks really similar to what people are already playing right now. It's barely any different, honestly. And even though they have the choice to play Extravagance as well, uh, they're not doing that. They're only playing one Prosperity. In the TCG, we're seeing a lot of people who are, that are playing like two Prosperity, two Pre-Prep, uh, because this card breaks a lot. Uh, and ironically, if you draw multiples in a deck like this, you lose. Uh, because this deck, again, the goal, you need to start playing very fast. If you, if you take way too long to play, you lose the game. Because this deck does not have the same speed as the Snake Eyes decks. So you can't keep up with them. So if you let them play too hard, you can't deal with their follow-up and you're just going to lose the game. But yeah, a lot of hat shops, obviously, because the last thing that you want to do is let them play. So double Nibiru, triple Ash, triple Maxi, triple Valor, triple Imperm. That is 14, if my maths are correct. And then three non-engine, no, sorry, two. And everything else is just engine. Yeah, a lot of gas. Uh, the deck should not break too much. But again, 42 cards. I don't know if I really agree with that. You might as well just cut... Uh, something and then make it for you like cut the one of talent that just doesn't do anything this card just random as hell and then i, I really don't like odd ice from grab dragon in the main deck i would side deck it instead i think it's better uh, when you know for a fact that you're going first because going second this card just really doesn't do anything whatsoever so yeah not my cup of tea and then in the side deck even more hand shafts again six more hand shafts uh thrust soul release call by the grave lightning storm duster a pointer of the red lotus is also a card that is seeing a little bit of play but it's really not that insane i mean it also, this card only exists in the OCG. If your opponent has, like, a handful of gas and has a point, and you have a pointer, you're not doing anything. It's only really good in, like, those formats where, like, you're basically just making the FTK board and you only really lose to, like, sphere mode evenly and stuff like that. It's really good to, like, remove board breakers from your opponent's hand. But people are on hand shops right now, so I really just don't think this card is good at all. I rather, I'd rather just play Floodgates that are turn-skipping cards, like D-Bearer, Different Dimension Ground. These two cards are the nuts. They are the only thrust targets you really, really need. But I guess if you just want more diversity, a pointer of the Red Lotus could be a fine one. At least it's like somewhat generic. You can play it against like Flunderies as well. But to be fair, thrust into Imperm is the only card that you really need against Flunderies. They, they lose more to Imperm, Valor, and Ash than to any other card in the game. I want to say almost. Well, at least 
the, the ones that are being played realistically. But yeah, in conclusion, you are trying to make rank 1s against Standby Dragon if you can go first. Because Assemble Nightingale and Kikinaga Shifucho are insane against Standby Dragon. They basically means that you are going to survive. And surviving means that you're going to be winning the game because their play is not too insane if they can't kill you. So yeah, that's it for this video. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know your thoughts about the OCG format in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.